Every, we, in fact, when we just got started, we, we heard from a lot of people who, who had so many ideas, and, and very few of them were, could we implement until we have the 501c3. So this is a huge step for us. So you had a lawyer help you? We did, yeah, yes, yeah. pro bono. It's, 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 it's not an easy process, I understand. No, yeah. it took some time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I think people like to you know, give charitably, and, mm -hmm. and charity begins at home. Yes, yeah. I like to think that, but it, I think the for us, what we've also struggled with is that the idea of a playhouse as a nonprofit is a very new one for people, and and having a new philanthropic yes. opportunity in Larchmont is something that I think it's it's taken people in some cases it's taken them a little while to get their heads around it, but the support has been amazing, and also what we've learned is is how much education we have to do because fewer people know than you know we were always surprised to to meet people who hadn't yet heard oh, the, that the, the movie theater closing. might be going away, and they're they're. 201, they're shocked and dismayed. Yes. I, I, we have heard from very few people who think that this is a good idea. Uh, it, it's, it really is, as you said, it's part of why you move to a town like Larchmont or Romerinac is that you want that walkability. You want to be able to see your neighbors on the sidewalks with you, You're doing things in town, having communal experiences. We don't all stay in our houses all day and night. No. You know, the, one of the things that's hurting the movie business, too, is you know, so many people stream stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. Those of us who are older, I mean, I, I love the experience of going into a dark movie mm -hmm. and sitting there with my snack and right. watching the previews. I, I, you know, I love it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. I, I sit and watch the credits at the end. So you know, it's, it's a different uh, milieu than you know, maybe today's generation of 18, 19, 20, 25 year olds are used to because they just automatically, you know, they don't buy newspapers because they, uh -huh. they get all their news online. Right. So, they're just so used to going to the internet to get everything. Mm -hmm. But if you, like you said, if you could disperse it with, with other uh, cultural stuff in there, mm -hmm. it, it mm -hmm. might draw more people in. Well, I think also if you ha if you bring back the novelty factor, so uh, yes. the, the seeing a movie in a movie theater becomes, first of all, a communal experience, also a, a really pleasing one, that the, the popcorn is better, the food is better than you could have at home. Maybe you get to bring your drink into the theater the way you can at the Alamo right. Draft House. That you, you change the tone of it so it doesn't feel pedestrian to right, see it right, in the right, theater. Right. It feels like a really entertaining and high-end night out. And you might want to do, too, is movies that kids you know, don't usually see anymore. Like uh, old time, uh, you know, when I was a kid, there was a movie there on 18th Street and 8th Avenue called The Elgin. It's now the Joyce Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember going there, and I was 10, 11, or 12, and I watched on a Saturday, they had old movies, and it was Duck Soup from the Marx Brothers, and it was A Night at the Opera from the right, Marx Brothers. Right, right. And I sat there, and I cracked up. Mm -hmm. And I remember going home, and I'm saying, Dad, did you ever hear these guys, the Marx Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me and said, I remember when they came out. Right, you know? right. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, a, a lot of old-time film history. I love film history. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of old-time film history that you, you might want to incorporate in. Absolutely. You no, know, I think that would be wonderful because there are fewer and fewer opportunities to see those old movies. And they're even more entertaining than they probably were when they came out because they have, you know, they're because they seem so old fashioned yes. to us and the technology is so different. But also we have such a, Larchmont has such a storied history with the film industry. I mean, from Mary Pickford vacationing here yes. in the- D.W. You know, Griffith, it, yeah. Exactly, and then and Mr. Flagler himself. Exactly. I mean, to the Dillon brothers and David O. Russell is an MHS Ang grad. Ang Lee, of course, and uh, Bennett Miller and Dan Futterman. We've, we, we, and the PACE program itself, I think also keeps turning yes. out talented, Yes thespians and, and the performers and I think that to deny the, the kind of town that Larchmont is and the kind of community that Larchmont Marinick is in terms of the the performing arts talent it seems very odd and and very troubling not to have an outlet for that in town that's a great point have have people involved in the business gotten involved in trying to help you to save it you know we've been we've heard from some uh, we've, we've heard from members of the Dillon family for example who have said that there's you know, there's great personal support but the challenge for for any actor or for anybody in that business is just to be available at yeah. the very moment when that you, you need, need them, them. Yeah. you know they can't hand out flyers on the sidewalk for right, us right, right. but our hope is that in the fall if, if we are still in this fight which I believe we will be that we can stage the kind of benefit where we could certainly invite and honor some of these local luminaries and Ang Lee, you know, being chief right. among them. We, we have a, a new red movie carpet with the local Wouldn't that be fun? That would be, <laughs> That'd be yeah, delightful yeah. to <laughs> premiere a movie. Yeah. You know, Matt Dillon has a movie coming out next year, I believe, and of course Ang Lee has one coming up, so there are lots of opportunities 
ways uh, if, if only we can can persuade these people to to come to town but we don't want to forget Matt's brother Kevin who's, uh, oh no yeah, I would yeah. never forget him no yeah. he's and he's I think um, he just Instagrammed a picture of himself at Walters not so long ago so we know oh, that the local feeling yeah, runs yes. deep which is which is spectacular. They're a very nice family actually. They are. I, I, yeah. I, I, I lived around the corner from uh, Mrs. Dillon. Their mother was a I sweetheart. I went to Central with the youngest brother. So oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was in my class. Um, how can people who are watching and hopefully want to contribute, how, how do they go about contributing? Well, we have a website. It's called, uh, it's at savelarchmontplayhouse.org. And we also have a Facebook page, which if you um, go to Facebook and type in Save Larchmont Movies, you'll, you'll find us. And in both of those locations, you will see buttons to click to pledge or even just to contact us and, and send us a note. And you'll see links to the change.org petition. The pledges are really the most important at this point, okay. considering that we've already reached our halfway mark. Um, we have a ways to go, but we feel very confident that with community support, we can get there. Good, good. So it, I, I'm sure they'll have that, that address on the screen uh, as, as we go on. I, and. Uh, is it going to be a fundraiser or anything like that you'd like to pitch? Or? You know, we're still planning a fall fundraiser, but we've had a lot of local restaurants who've been incredibly supportive. I mean, the local businesses have been magnificent, and there is a lot of interest in doing a local fundraiser. We don't have any details to share yet, but okay. as soon as we do, I will, I will let be, you know. And we'll update yeah. it here Wonderful. on the show. Wonderful. That's you know, great. No problem. Thank you. Now, let's just talk a little bit. You know, this is about preserving who we are, preserving mm -hmm. our history. Now, you, you've, you've done a lot of this work. As a as a historian, as a historian, yes, yes, yes that is that's uh, and, my game, yes. And, and you you've done it, concentrating, in New York City, mm -hmm. which is you know where I grew up, mm -hmm. and, and, and has a fascinating history. Do you mind if we just take a minute? No, I'd be happy to. to. to talk about we we were talking before about the old boundaries of New York City. Mm -hmm. you know, I went to school on Twenty First Street and Tenth Avenue, and at that at one point that was the river. Right. That was the river's mm -hmm. edge, kind of. So our, our basement used to flood. <laughs> I bet. Yes. I bet it did. But what, what do you find most interesting about the history of old New York? I love the way the history is literally and figuratively layered. And we mm -hmm. talked a little bit about archaeology uh, before we went on. It It is it's mind-boggling to me to think that the city extend, extended its, it changed its contours as recently as the 70s when Battery Park City right. was built on World Trade Center landfill. That the, and thinking about Water Street used to be at the at water. The water's edge. You yes. know, it, that those kinds of, that kind of information about the contours of New York I, yeah. I find endlessly fascinating. And I love, uh, there's a wonderful book called um, Unearthing, I believe it's called Unearthing Gotham, which is about, it's by two wonderful archaeologists, and it's about what you'll find when you start sifting through the city's dirt, you know, through, just above Manhattan shift, and it is I, it's amazing. I'd love to do this when I retire, because I, 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 I find the city so fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in the city, I'm 55 years old, when, I, when I'm driving, uh, like, into New York, down the east side, and there's a point on the Deegan where you, where you come up over a hill, and you can see the city, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like a really good panorama, mm -hmm. and I always say to my kids, and I think my kids are sick of hearing it by now, but I always say to them, that you'll never see anything like that in the world. There's, there's no other place like that in the world. Yeah. Like, okay, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it, you know, I'm, I'm an elevator mechanic, so I'm on roofs of buildings a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love looking around and just seeing. You That's know, a great perspective to it, have. it is a great perspective. And, you know, th there's so much, you know, that's changed. You know, we... we we were talking before, you, you You have a history with the General Theological Seminary, mm -hmm. and, and I grew up in that neighborhood, and that neighborhood was owned by the guy who wrote The Night Before Christmas, right. Clement Clark Moore. Yes, his family. Mm -hmm. And I, I told you before, I was looking at a map, and the street that I grew up on, there used to be a stream that ran right down the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. just, that, that kind of stuff really fascinates me. And you, know, you, you wonder how the Native Americans, you know, kind of tooled around there, and you know, unfortunately right. that history's all gone. Right, no, no, it, it is, and and um, but there are still some wonderful old graveyards, you know, in, yes. in Lower Manhattan that can tell you the stories, or you can barely make out the stories of people who li who lived when there still were Native Americans right. living in New York. Uh, it's um, I, one of, Washington Irving is one of my specialties, and I once gave a tour of his. Washington Irving's New York to a New York Post uh, real estate reporter, and we started on William Street, which is where Irving was born. Because he, oh, really? he he's he's of Scotch Irish heritage. He's not Dutch at all, even though he wrote all about Dutch New York right. and Legend of Sleepy Hollow and all of that. And we were standing in front of a Dwayne Reed that I figured out was pretty much approximately where his childhood home would have been, <laughs> and it just seemed very strange. Yeah. But it, but that's how New York 
always has yes. been. And in fact, um, one of my books, I started out by quoting Cynthia Ozick, who says that New York is inscribed with the, the scribble of the wrecking ball, meaning that we are always, this is just how yeah, we, we do it. We, we are change. always Every 30 changing. Years, yeah. Right. So if you can find the history buried in the rubble, yeah. it's amazing. It's a transcendent. You know, you, you talk about Manhattan Schist, which is the, the bedrock yes. that that city's okay. built on. Uh, I had a, recently I was working in a building a few years ago on 55th Street and Park Avenue. And I had just gotten a building and I was in the basement and I was in the elevator pit. And the whole building started shaking. And the uh, counterweight in the elevator started banging against the rails. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't know what the hell was going on. So I ran into the building manager and I said, what, what is that? They, they're, they're building a, a tunnel for the Long Island Railroad huh? to go to Grand Central. And they were blasting. Wow. Like real, by and and it shakes the bedrock mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. that it just it was. I, I'd never experienced that before. And, uh, well, I should ask. I have a, a Maranek High School classmate who is working on the Second Avenue subway, so I should see if I can get you. Oh yeah. Down in the tunnel with her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, She's an architect, and, and oh, her, really? her firm is is helping out with the subway. So she posts pictures of the of the work they're doing. You know, that many feet below, below yeah, that, your that, feet, that, be you, below really, your feet. And we really need that. Mm -hmm, you know, second, mm -hmm. the, 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 the east side really needs another subway line. It's well, important. they've been working on it since my mom was single and living in Manhattan. Okay, so, but we don't want to say no, it. No, I, <laughs> I won't say Mom it. might be watching. <laughs> we don't want to give up anything. Yeah. <laughs> she would say. A couple of years ago. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, 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 you know, Mamaroneck, New York, I mean, it, this, these are all old communities. Mamaroneck was settled in 1661, mm -hmm. and you know, there's so little of that history left. And, you know, they're trying to save the Delancey House. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, because once, once you lose it, that's it. It's true. It's gone, and, you know, you, you don't have that history to impart mm -hmm. to your children. Mm -hmm. Now you, you have a child growing up here, and you know, it, would, it would be fun to say, you know, that, that's where uh, you know, James Fenimore Cooper wrote some of his stories. It is, and I think also that uh, people are really hungry for that. I, I do I do a lot of work with historic Hudson Valley right now, and, and hundreds of thousands of people come to their Halloween events every year because they're looking for a piece the of that. Right, but they're looking for a mythical Sleepy Hollow, not so much the one that's really yes. there. They want a piece of that history and that kind of mystery that came with an America before it was all paved over, you know, what it was like to genuinely be spooked in the yes. forest and and there's so much of that that's possible on our side of the county too i mean the, the tales are are in, in the cooper tales in particular but there there are so many opportunities to really remind people what it used to look like and what it what it used to be yes. so many centuries ago and, and i think it's important for not just children but for all of us to remember our history mm -hmm. because it, it keeps you from making those mistakes again hopefully right Right. But Bessie, we, we, we have to end it up here, but I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, As did I, thank you. Anything I can do to help uh, your organization save that movie theater, I'd be happy to. This is a huge help. I thank you very much. Well, I hope so. You know, just put a, hopefully there'll be a few people watching. We'll put it on YouTube and you could use it as you see fit. But Sounds thank you great. very much. Thank you. And good luck in the future. Thanks. You're welcome.